Hello, Jay and Dan, my favorite anchors at the network. <laughs> that uh, might make it there. You never know. <laughs> <laughs>
fakes the handoff and finds Ryan Hewitt. 24 10 Colts. Marcus Mariota out with a neck stinger, so the Titans forced to go with Blaine Gebert. Gebert, 73 yards passing in the first half, and the third finds Luke Stucker, who does the rest, 22 yards. That cuts the lead to seven. Nine minutes to go, still a seven point game on third and five. Gebert out of the pocket, and right to Kenny Moore, who plays on the other team. That led to a field goal. Colts are into the postseason. They win it 33-17. The final playoff spot, very simple. Either the Vikings were getting in or the defending Super Bowl champion, Eagles, who needed to beat Washington and have the Vikes lose to get back into the postseason. Nick Foles playing with extra incentive. Listen to this. If he plays 33% of the snaps this season and Philly makes the playoffs, he didn't earn a bonus of $1 million. Coming in, he played 29% of the snaps. Alshon Jeffrey, 12-minute drive is capped off there with a touchdown. Eagles up 10-0 at halftime. It's all looking good for Folsey, the Super Bowl MVP. Late third, Foles. Nelson Aguilar punches it in. Foles ties an NFL record earlier in the drive, completing 25 straight passes. This is second touchdown of the day. A 17-0 Eagles lead. Everything was going their way until the fourth. When Foles is sacked by Ryan Kerrigan, he would be forced to leave the game. And you're going to see it from this angle. He looks like he is in uh, quite a bit of pain. There he is getting up. He's like, I'm in quite a bit of pain. Left with bruised ribs. Team expects him to be OK, but he leaves 1% shy of the 33% of snaps he needed to get the $1 million bonus. But the Eagles are heading back to the postseason. Bears and Vikings with the Eagles win. The Vikes needing a win to get in. Chicago still with a shot at a first round bye with a win. Second quarter, Bears up 7-0. Mitch Trubisky looking deep. Finds Taylor Gibran. Look at this catch. Oh, that was nice. Ruled he was down at the one. Led to a Jordan Howard touchdown. So Chicago's up 14-0 for the second week in a row. Vikings offense struggling to get going. Minnie's sixth possession. Cousins throw to Dalvin Cook is behind him. Very next play. Cousins looking to Adam Thielen. And this this isn't even close. The Pro Bowl receiver and quarterback, they get into it on the sideline, arguing over the play. They got a field goal. Stephon Diggs comes over to reassure Cousins. He says, hey, you're all good. I trust you. The Bears out gaining Minnesota in yards, 204 to 49 and a half. Third quarter, Vikings in the red zone. Cousins to a wide open Diggs. Touchdown. Vikings cut the lead to three. And Diggs goes right to Cousins. Ah, believe it. You're still good. Do the Bears score a touchdown to extend the lead to 11? Cousins facing third and two. And it passes. Uh, dropped. Fourth and three. Season on the line. Diggs. Hit hard. Turnover on downs. Vikings, who began the season with 13 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl, miss the playoffs. NFC wildcard game. Seahawks going to head to Dallas for the late Saturday game. Seattle beat the Cowboys way back in week three by a score of 24-13 on Sunday. It's Nick Foles and the Eagles continuing their magic against the Bears. Uh, Philly looks to be the first back-to-back -back Super Bowl champs since the Patriots in the mid-2000s. You may have seen our popular new Twitter account. Did Kawhi play? Which, before every Raptors game, asked the question, did Kawhi play? But perhaps we should have started the Twitter account, did Kyle play? Seven out of the last eight games, the answer would have been no, including Sunday afternoon against the Chicago Bulls. Out again with a sore back. Oh, no. Robin Lopez and the Raptor. The Raptors' New Year's resolution was to be nicer to Robin. Turns out it was the sidekick for Batman, who's looking portly and out of shape, much like Dan and myself. Uh, these Robin Lopez mascot encounters can stop any day now. <laughs> Second quarter, Lopez hits the deck. He's in the way of teammate Zach Levine. It's a turnover, and Pascal Siakam will eventually lay it in. 
Now, Lopez arguing with the ref for a foul call, but he doesn't realize that he was he was run over by his own team. So the Raptors are up one at the break. Kind of, look at that jacket on Valanciunas. Is that corner right? Or maybe Swade? Uh, JV, feel free to, uh, to talk to us. Let us know. Is that Corduroy or Swade? It's a Kawhi Leonard 27 point performance as the Raps hang on for the victory. So we already showed you part of the AFC story. Colts and Ravens getting in. Steelers, not so much. As for the rest, Texans were gunning for the AFC South title. Pats looking to clinch a first round bye, while the Chiefs had a chance to grab first in the AFC. Mahomes hooks up with Demarcus Robinson for the longest play of his career, 89 yards. Gives him 50 touchdowns, also puts him over 5,000 passing yards. Joining Peyton Manning is the only players in NFL history to reach both milestones in the same season. His parents? Yeah, they're there. Is that Eddie Vedder with them? Chiefs roll, clinching the FC's number one seed in the playoffs. Eddie Vedder's like 54 or something? He just turned mid-50s? Anyway, seems about right. Uh, so Mahomes joins elite company. Only the third man to throw for 50 touchdown passes in a single season. The other two, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, who reached 50 in the 2007 campaign. As Houston is the first team to win their division after starting 0-3 since 1992 when Eddie Vedder was 19 years old. Half a sack would be a good band name. <laughs> Just me or is that a lot of completions? Back to back, Joins to Peyton, Hogan, Manning, Brett Favre, and Drew Brees as the fourth quarterback to reach the milestone. Next Pat's drive, Brady Peyton finds Jets Edelman, Edelman, Brady Edelman right Brady's first. fourth touchdown, touchdown pass of the day. That's a season high. New England clinches the two seed and ninth straight first round bye. And by the way, the Jets fired Todd Bowles after the game. <laughs> they finished four and 12. Indy headed to Houston, and it's uh, one of the two wildcard matchups in the AFC. That's on Saturday. Sunday, it's the Chargers taking on the Ravens. Still to come, shake up an oil country. Edmonton bolsters their blue line, but at what cost? Dang. Well, Arizona's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, Russia and Canada, the last uh, undefeated teams left in Group A at the World Juniors. They meet Monday. This is Switzerland, Russia. Look at this. Three all in the second. Marco Lehman on the shorthanded break. He's tripped twice. So the Swiss awarded two penalty shots on the same play. Lehman, who drew the penalty, uh, he's going to go first. He's already got two goals in the game. Uh, okay. Double IHF rules allow a team to choose who takes their penalty shot. So for the second shooter, they select Philip. Karashev, tied with Canada's Max Comtois for the tournament lead, five goals, and misses the net. It's still tough. In three minutes, still remaining the period. And players exchange jabs after a whistle. Ivan Marinov, butt in. You can't do that. Give him five in a game. Russia still killing that penalty in the third. Kirill Slepitz collects his own rebound. Scores. Slepitz. Don't two slap on that guy. Slepitz had two short net breakaways in the second. Scores their first of four goals in the period. So Russia remains undefeated, and they all get sent for New Year's Eve. What do you think Slepitz's nickname is? Sleppy? Slepsy. Let us know what you think Sleppy's nickname is. Is it Sleppy or Slepsy? Happy holidays still. Send us a tweet. Oh, Tim really mailing it in. That's what it was before we left, and that's what it is now. Yeah, we still have New Year's. And uh, these are the only remaining living poinsettias. All the rest all, we came back. They all died. Nobody watered them. <laughs> Nobody watered No one came into the studio when we were gone to check on them. They were all dead. Yeah. They were like, <laughs> The Edmonton Oilers have acquired defenseman Brandon Manning and prospect Robin Norrell from the Blackhawks. In return, Chicago gets Drake Kajula and Jason Garrison. You shut your mouth, Mr. Hat! Oilers fans know Manning well. Back in 2015, he caused Big David to miss three months with a broken collarbone because of that hit. Edmonton continued to deal. They actually made this trade first, acquiring defenseman Alex Petrovich 
from the Panthers for defenseman Chris Weidman and a 2019 conditional third rounder Petrovic, an Alberta native, a second round pick by Florida back in 2010. Uh, Weidman played just five games with the Oil after they acquired him from Ottawa a month ago. The Oilers, the Jets, New Year's Eve, TSN 3, 7.30 p.m. Central. That's a good primer for uh, New Year's. Uh, the Jets going to be without Dustin Bufflin for at least a month. It's because of a left leg injury. Injury occurred midway through the third of Saturday's loss to the Wild. Bufflin's left ankle bends awkwardly after this collision in the corner. Bufflin averaging nearly 25 minutes of ice time, the most of anyone on the Jets this season. That is a huge loss. Uh, 29 points, 32 games, had him on pace for a career-high 69 points. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Almost a point a game. Canada will, speaking of defensemen, Canada will be without defenseman Jared McIsaac for the New Year's Eve battle against Russia. Suspended for a check to the head of Joachim Kondalik of the Czech Republic Saturday. It's always a happy new year when we can have Bob McKenzie on the show. Yep. Uh, uh, one of our favorite people on the planet. Here he is to set up the New Year's Eve clash between Canada and the Russians. Can't wait. Uh, we wish you a great New Year's, Bob, and I hope for 2019 our friendship only grows stronger. Absolutely, Dan and Jay. No question about that. As I was saying just before we came on here, you guys are, well, my favorite. No, you're, you're a couple of really good sports center anchors. Ah, we'll take it. That's a good promo for our show, or a good tagline. I think Jarrett Anderson Dolan, who you see here in this promo, is sad that Bob may have been a bit facetious <laughs> in those comments. When we come back, is this the end for Eli Manning in New York? Why is Aaron Rodgers even playing in Week 17? We'll attempt to answer those questions next on the J and Dan program. 76ers and Blazers. CJ McCollum averaging only 15 points on 35% shooting in his last six games. Second quarter. Yeah, that's one of the plays. Stops, drops. Uh, the tip missed to McCollum. Two Sixers are cleared right out of the way. Draw on beat, sitting out with a knee soreness. With a knee soreness, or knee soreness, however you want it said. McCollum, step back three. 26 hurt, first half points. It's the most he scored to any half this season. Portland's broadcast team having some fun with his numbers at halftime. And CJ, as we mentioned, busting out big time. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's and on fire. Fuego, look at him. He's on fire. <laughs> Don't burn him too much. He got a second half to play. <laughs> Fireface. <laughs> the latest Marvel superhero. In 35 I'm points, on fire again! 35 points in three quarters. Portland wins by 34. Dan, did you see this? LeBron walking uh, into a game with a glass of wine in his hand? I did see that. Everyone uh, exploded. Everyone exploded, including Marvel's newest character, Fireface. And LeBron's 34 on Sunday. He says, oh, I forgot my wine cup in the car. That's what he apparently said there. I'm not sure how we would know that. Interesting uh, clashing uh, patterns there. I can never pull that off. I'm not that confident. Contavious Caldwell Pope to Lance Stevenson. Bron, Bron. Are those acid wash jeans? <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a nice move on Willie Colley Stein. Uh, Lakers trail by seven in the fourth. Ingram bringing him back. Spin. He had 21. Lakers close on an 18-4 run uh, as LeBron out of the lineup with that groin injury. He can drink all the wine he wants. <laughs> a chance of tears were in the forecast in East Rutherford Sunday. Eli Manning potentially playing his final game as a Giant. The man already at legendary status. Two Super Bowl wins, two Super Bowl MVPs. Boom! Done. As for Manning's playing future, the rumor is that if the Giants choose to release Eli in the offseason, he's going to simply retire. It's Cowboys for Giants. Eli arriving what could be his last game. He always looks sad, starting his 16th game in a season for the 13th time in his career. He does. I'd like to see a fresh new haircut on Eli. He's got a good head of hair. Maybe a fade or something. Clock winding down in the first half on third down. Manning throwing deep. 
Cody Latimer Hall. Will you see that? One-handed catch by Latimer for his first touchdown of the season. Manning's 359th career touchdown, all of those with the Giants. Giants down 28-25, fourth quarter, third down. Manning to Latimer. This is another outstanding catch. Wow. A 31-yard reception from the three. Rookie Saquon Barkley. Watch this play. Look at that. His 11th touchdown of the season. Giants out 32-28. Under two to play. Dak Prescott. Three touchdowns in the game already on fourth down. Prescott scrambles. Fires to Cole Beasley. Makes the catch. Initially called incomplete. They reviewed it. Beasley got a knee in before landing out of the end zone. So the catch is ruled a touchdown. Down by one, Cowboys go for two. Prescott finds Michael Gallup. Cowboys win a wild one. What could be Eli's final game with the Giants. Cowboys, they host Seattle next weekend. Both these teams are out of playoff contention, but we wanted to show it to you, the Lions and Packers, because Aaron Rodgers got the start in a game that was meaningless. And here he's sacked and he loses his helmet. But he stayed in the game and finished the quarter, but later left with a concussion. So, yeah, not good. Second quarter, fourth down, Lions in the red zone. Quarter of the end zone. Yeah, Pat McAfee's a former punter, so he appreciates this. Matt Prater, first career TD pass as the Lions shut out the Packers. And that was that the play-by-play -play guy, Joe Davis, voice of the Dodgers on that game? Oh, I don't know. Is he is he hanging around with McAfee? Joe Davis, 22 years old. We'll find that out. Dolphins Bills. Kyle Williams announced he's going to call it a career after 13 years with Buffalo. It was Kyle Williams dead in Erie County. First quarter. Dolphins one yard line. Williams into the game on offense. Josh Allen punches it in for the score. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. These highlights are in the show because producer Tim, biggest Bills fan on earth. Huge Bills fan. Williams pushed the pile. After setting Buffalo's single season record for most rushing yards by a QB earlier in the game, fourth quarter, Allen scrambling, decides to run it. 30 yards, touchdown. Allen had a career best three passing touchdowns to go along with two rushing. Future's bright in Buffalo, right? Under five to go. Williams with a career first. There it is. Yep, the Bills legend goes out in style. His first reception of his 13-year career. Buffalo win their final game of the season. Oh, Buffalo. You know, I've never been to Buffalo. Never? Come on, never? They have a Walden Galleria. And now it's time for Jay and Dan's We Called It. In 2017, we predicted that Amanda Nunes would win the featherweight title. Tell me, I'm in Vegas all the time. Where do you get good chicken right, wings? Does somebody get a pen? Oh. Now, I have to ask Nina. Is Nina, I know you remember. Wolfgang Pox. Well, there it is. We called it. Ah, uh, every time. Straight. Spangler Cup. We just know. Spangler Cup, semifinal, Nuremberg Ice Time against Team Canada. Your the the exact boy shot. Friend of Sports Center Jane and Dan, Corey Emerton will score. And Team Canada opens that Emerton and Boy. It's the Emerton Boy Chuck connection. Beating Nicholas Tradle. I believe it's pronounced Tradle. One of two goals in the game for Zach Boychuk. Canada up by two, then in the second Canada power play. Christy Domenico in front. It's off a Nuremberg defender. I believe Dustin Nielsen of the TSN radio in Edmonton. Is Former voice of the Fort McMurray Oil Baron. He's on the call on this one. Dustin Nielsen. Uh, Canada's Brandon Buck, or a Canadian Brandon Buck, makes a move on Zach and beats Zach the cow. Uh, but Canada still wins and makes it to the finals. Let's hear the music, Mike. Yes. Our that arena music. looks, again, they always say Spengler Cup should be on your bucket list for uh, for events Absolutely to attend. Absolutely agree with you. Uh, Canada against 
Cupio. So it's Cupio. Calpa. Calpa? Oh, this is huge. You ready for this Cupio news? Cupio Calpa. You ready for this? Oh, this is huge. The Toronto Blue Jays have acquired pitcher Clayton Richard in cash considerations from the San Diego Padres. The 35-year-old was 7-11 and 11 with an ERA over 5 this past season. Going back the other way is Canadian outfielder Connor Panis. The 25-year-old hit nine home runs in double-A last year. This move comes two days after the Jays signed former Angels pitcher Matt Shoemaker to a one-year deal. So I guess both of these deals uh, indicate one very distinct thing for the Toronto Blue Jays this season. We're winning the World Series. Welcome back to Sports Center with Jane Dan, presented by Tim Hortons. It's time for the Jannies, where we sum up some of the best and worst from the day. That was nice. Dak Prescott to Cole Beasley. Prescott using his legs to get out of the pocket, then find Beasley for the TD grab. And what a catch. Got that knee down. It counts. Dallas wins. If you're a furry, this is right up your alley. It's the uh, Robin Lopez and mascot saga. They, they said he was supposed to be nice to Robin for New Year's, and it was Robin who's friends with Batman. Friends or colleagues? I don't know. Maybe you know me. I'm a colleague of Batman. <laughs> uh, Javon Wims runs over a, a Vikes cheerleader here. Surely to lead to our top 10 running over people moments on the next edition of Sports Center. Matt Prater lines up for the field goal. Instead, he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm going for the touchdown. He's played 171 games. It's his first touchdown pass. This is a disaster. Kirk Cousins trying to teach Adam Thielen, who had a great, great season, how to run his routes or routes, whatever you like to say. Oh, my goodness. Thielen didn't love that display at all. Larry Fitzgerald. One-handed grab. Is this it for him? Look at that. Used one hand the whole time. Still needs a bigger helmet. I've always said that. Larry Fitzgerald, one size too small on the helmet. Chris Dunn. And again, Jonas Valanciunas were fascinated with the jacket, suede or corduroy. That looks like suede. Yeah, that's suede. Looks like a nice jacket. And I've never seen this before. Two penalty shots awarded on the same play. And the Swiss missed both of them. Swiss miss. Martina Hingis. Where's she now? Uh, I, I'm not sure if you saw. Someone tweeted out a picture. I think it was James Duffy. Uh, tweeted out a picture of that game. Um, arena was packed for hmm. Switzerland, Russia. Hey, people love their hockey in this country. My neighbor today said, you know, I love the World Juniors. I wait for I stay in my basement for the whole holiday season. <laughs> I don't know if he talks to his, uh, to his do you, kid. Do you send him rations? He brought me over uh, food when uh, we had the baby. It's a good neighbor. It's good to have good neighbors. It's the worst play of the day. Watch Jared Cook. Derek Carr throws his way, gives up on the route. Daniel Sorensen brings it back for pick six. This perfectly encapsulates the entire season for John Gruden's Oakland Raiders. Oh, well, I give up. Highlight of the night, final minutes. Cowboys, Giants, Dak Prescott. Let's free the pressure. Spins away. To Cole Beasley. He's got a knee down. So you only have to get one knee down. Yes, you have to get two feet, but just one knee. Remember that later in life. When you're proposing. <laughs> uh, we blew it. Uh, and actually, it's a pretty short list, shockingly, considering this is the only show we're doing. Uh, well, we're back, we should mention, back on the second. On the second. We're taking New Year's Eve and New Year's Day off. Well deserved. And then we're back on the second. Uh, I spit while uh, talking at the start of the show, but we couldn't find 
video evidence of it, we would have showed it to you. And it would have been pretty compelling. It was an SS. Small spit. 2019. <laughs> It's a year of fitness. It's the year Us. my pants will fit. <laughs> Hi, uh, welcome to Sports Center with Jay and Dan. Uh, final day of the NFL regular season. Some free playoff spots up for grabs. I just spit there. Did you just see that? Okay, we'll yeah, look we'll for that later. We'll track it down. It's small, just a tiny spit. And uh, I uh, question whether Josh Noy still worked in the company. He does, I guess. He's a producer mm -hmm. and a pretty important one. My understanding is your time here at the network is going to be pretty short. It's over. For Tim or him? No, for you. Oh. Because Josh Noy will enact revenge on you oh. for questioning whether he was still working here. This didn't go the way I planned. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> My mic is on, everyone, and I'm ready to host the program. Let's go! Statement Flyers President Paul Holmgren said they no longer share, share the same fit, uh, <laughs> philosophical approach in the team's direction. Looks, here we go. Jay and Dan Newsreel. Yes! Oh my god! We got the graph! Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I gotta go. Bye, guys. What's going on? She's out of here, kid. What? This is Philly. Now the team to beat in the NBA's Eastern Conference. Better than Boston? Better than Fox? Better than that? Better than that? And 58 rushing yards for Cam. Oh, oh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, 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 uh.